Hello, it's Melissa, the insurance exam queen here, and I have this delicious audio for you. This is the general insurance terms definition and memorization audio. As you listen to this audio, you're going to be hearing the concepts and the definitions that you need to know from the general insurance terms chapter in an easy to understand way, while also allowing the definitions to sink into your mind as you hear me repeat them. Listen to this audio as many times as you need to secure the knowledge so that you can recall it while you're taking your exam and pass your exam with ease and flow. This audio will go into 40 different topics that come from the general insurance terms chapter. What we're going to do for each one is you're going to hear the term or the concept name and definition. Then I'm going to provide a brief explanation of the topic in an easy to understand way. Then I'm going to repeat the definition and concept again after the explanation, and then we will move into repeating it three times so that you can sink that information into your brain. In addition to simply listening, you can also boost your study and memorization skills by writing down what you're hearing the first time that you listen to it. Then the second time that you listen to this recording, read the definitions that you wrote down while listening. Both of these things will help install the information into your brain so that you can quickly recall it on the exam and pass easily. Risk is the uncertainty or chance of loss occurring. What this means is that we have uncertainties that could happen in our life. Our car could crash, our house could burn down. These are all the certain things or chances of loss that we could have within our life. So risk is the uncertainty or chance of loss occurring. And now repeat with me three times. Risk is the uncertainty or chance of loss occurring. Risk is the uncertainty or chance of loss occurring. Risk is the uncertainty or chance of loss occurring. The two types of risks are pure risk and speculative risk. In the next few slides, we'll define pure risk and speculative risk, but right now it's important that you do remember these two types and that you can easily recall the two types of risk on the insurance exam. So we're gonna repeat three times. The two types of risk are pure risk and speculative risk. The two types of risk are pure risk and speculative risk. The two types of risk are pure risk and speculative risk. Pure risk is loss or nothing, no chance of gain, and only pure risks are insurable. What this means is that there's all types of risks, and pure risks are the one where basically either nothing happens or something bad happens. Either you crash your car or you don't. Either the house burns down or it doesn't. So in a pure risk, there is nothing to gain, you're only losing or nothing happens. Insurance companies will only cover pure risks. So they other risks, speculative, they will not cover. You cannot get insurance on a speculative risk. You can only get insurance on a pure risk. So a pure risk is loss or nothing, no chance of gain, and only pure risks are insurable. And now we will repeat that three times. Pure risk is loss or nothing, no chance of gain, only pure risks are insurable. Pure risk is loss or nothing, no chance of gain, only pure risks are insurable. Pure risk is loss or nothing, no chance of gain, only pure risks are insurable. Speculative risk is lose or gain like gambling. What this means is that in speculative risk, you have the risk of winning, but you also have the risk of losing. Insurance companies do not want to cover something where you could win because if you lose, they pay out and you win. And if you win, you win. You always walk away with something. So insurance companies do not cover speculative risks. You cannot get insurance for gambling going to like, there's no Las Vegas insurance. There's no horse races insurance. So speculative risks are ones where you could lose or where you can gain. And the most common example they're going to talk about is gambling, which is why we put it in the definition. So speculative risk is lose or gain like gambling. And now repeat with me three times. Speculative risk is lose or gain like gambling. Speculative risk is lose or gain like gambling. Speculative risk is lose or gain like gambling. I am a star at handling risk. I share, I transfer, I avoid, I retain, I reduce risk. So 
These are the methods of handling risk. And what's most important is remembering the names. And that's this is why we came up with the acronym IMA STAR at handling risk. If you can remember share, transfer, avoid, retain, and reduce, that's most important. It's not necessarily important to remember what each one is, although I will give you a brief explanation. Share is a way of like doing insurance among people you know or your friends as opposed to like doing it with a company. All of your friends pitch in $100 a month. It's in an emergency fund. You guys take a vote. If one of you has an emergency, you can take the money out that everyone is putting in. And there are formal ways of doing that um, with people you know, with groups of people that you're familiar with, etc. Transfer is actually insurance. When you insurance is the transfer of risk. So the risk of you crashing your car, the risk of your house burning down, you transfer that to the insurance company and let them deal with it. And that will actually be our next definition that we go into. Um, avoid is avoidance. This is where you just avoid any potential claim. You never leave your house. You don't buy a car so that you can't crash a car. But avoidance is almost impossible to do in its entirety because you have to go out, you have to live the world. It's impossible to potentially avoid every possible thing. Retain is self-insurance. This is either like a deductible where you retain the first $500 of the risk or you retain all of the risk by self-insuring and not getting insurance. So retain is to like keep. When you think of a retaining wall, it keeps back the water you are keeping the risk to yourself, either some of it or all of it. The last one is reduce risk. And this is where you simply take steps to try to avoid a risk from happening. You wash your hands so you don't get sick. You wear a mask so you don't breathe in germs. You exercise so that you can be healthy. You eat good food so that you can be healthy. So these are all things that you do to reduce the a chance of a risk happening. So handling risk, I am a star at handling risk. I share, I transfer, I avoid, I retain, and I reduce risk. And now we're going to repeat that with me three times. I am a star at handling risk. I share, I transfer, I avoid, I retain, and I reduce risk. I am a star at handling risk. I share, I transfer, I avoid, I retain, and I reduce risk. I am a star at handling risk. I share, I transfer, I avoid, I retain, and I reduce risk. Insurance is the transfer of risk. So as we talked about with risk before, you have the risk of crashing your car, the risk of your house burning down. And instead of bearing the full cost of that yourself, you can transfer it to the insurance company and let them deal with it. So that if you do crash your car, you pay a small deductible, they will pay the rest to take care of it. Your house burns down, you pay a small deductible, they will pay the rest to take care of it. So you're transferring the risk to the insurance company. So insurance is the transfer of risk. Now repeat with me three times. Insurance is the transfer of risk. Insurance is the transfer of risk. Insurance is the transfer of risk. The law of large numbers says the more data you have to look at, the more predictable losses will be. So we just talked about how insurance is a transfer of risk, and we are going to transfer the risk of our house burning down or our car crashing or dying too soon to the insurance company. They are going to charge us a premium. How do they determine what premium they are going to charge us? They use the law of large numbers. The law of large numbers is like, if you want to know what are the chances of an 18 year old crashing their car and getting into an accident, you don't want to look at just one 18 year old and see how they behave. You want to look at a million 18 year olds to see how they behave. And the more people you have to look at, the more predictable you will get at what actually happens. So insurance companies use the law of large numbers to analyze our behavior, see what it is that we do, what are our, what are our chances of us actually crashing our car, what are the chances of our house is actually burning down, and then you will pay a premium based on how much risk you bring to the table. So the law of large numbers says the more data you have to look at, the more predictable losses will be. And now repeat with me three times. The law of large numbers says the more data you have to look at, the more predictable losses will be. The law of large numbers says the more data you have to look at, the more predictable losses will be. The law of large numbers says the more data you have to look at, the more predictable losses will be.
Exposure is a unit of measurement to determine rates for an insured based on how risky they are.